Um, so, uh, how am I doing, Margaret? Time wise. Okay. I don't know. If I'm not good with time. Okay. So the next project is another, and I'm only showing competitions tonight because that's pretty much what I do. Uh, this competition is for the National Public Library and Archive of the Czech Republic, which is one of those pretty well publicized ones last fall Oops. and January. Okay. Um, it's a it's a very it's a very weird site. It's a big plane, um, but this is the the uh, the Prague Castle in the background. So we're actually on the plane above the city. This is the, the city that people know, the old city. Um, then there's the the Vladva River, and then the hillside and the Prague Castle. So so everyone knows that view. And then our building is somewhere in the back. So um, so actually the height limit was here, and we decided to make a very tall building. So that you can actually see it over the over the lip of the topography from over the lip of the topography from the center of the city. So that was very critical for our scheme um, to break the, break the rules. Um, next, so this is our first phase project. It's, to me, it's not very elegant and it's not very clear what's going on. It was a kind of branching system and uh, and, and a bunch of infill glazing. But at any rate, we knew we wanted in terms of masking to have this this gigantic. Um, vertical project that was sprouting out of the box. Next. So this is second phase now. Um, we're, the, the viewpoint here is from the, the time cathedral, like all the back cathedral. If people have been to Prague, they know this building. View from the center of the city out to the Prague Castle, but also to our, our proposed building, um, which I can only imagine if we have one would be the, the, the site of endless political problems that we solve. So competing with an existing text. Um, so one thing that another creature that we were looking at at the time was the radiolaria, which are very, very small microscopic marine animals. These are actually dead ones. When they're alive, they're filled with these gooey cells. But the dead ones have um, basically what survives the skeleton. And they're interesting because they're, they're first of all, kind of spherical, all the monkey balls. And they have these, these, um, these patterns in them. A lot of them also have a, a sphere within a sphere, and then these connecting struts in between them. Very interesting morphology, um, also high performance in nature. Next. So we started studying these buckyballs. Um, we, we wanted to do something that was relatively straightforward, without a ton of geometry, because we really wanted to win. And so we, we began to model a, a sort of low-res buckyball here. And, um, and so you can see here there's something mounted, there's something floating inside, an internal Internal mass and these kind of structs coming out to an external mass, which became the basis for our second phase project, where the, the National Archive is nested in here for our protection. Um, the part of the brief that was really important for this project was uh, was based on fear. They had lost a huge portion of their collection during the floods two years earlier before they did the competition, which people know about. So one of the requirements for the competition was that no, uh, none of the National Archive could be below the ground level. It had to be um, above the first floor. So we took that even more literally and said, OK, not only is it going to be above the first floor, but it's going to be um, nested within a secondary shell as a protection, which became the basis of the structural idea and also the energy project. Next. So we did a lot of studies in the computer to figure out how we could um, both suspend this, this archive um, above ground, but also link it back structurally to some stiff points. And actually, there are three cores that we're linking back to here. Okay. Here it is a lot more refined, where we're starting to figure out about how big the archive is, and then about how um, we can start to interrelate that to a pattern on the roof. So here's the project. Um, it's, uh, it's basically a, a Voronoi second shell a, a very spherical kind of organization, but which has been merged with the box. There it is from the south side. Uh, next. It's about 60 meters high. About 30 feet high next. And um, you can see that um, it's, it's also, in terms of its height, it's not just relating to the um, faraway condition of the, of the old city, but it's also related to the front of the So yeah, the plans, you can always read the National Archive in the center. Um, of plants, and then 
offices on uh, the outside. So in the interior, and this was really critical for selling the project, the interior, the National Archive was always visible, yet always unaccessible. So that, that became the kind of mantra of the design, that we wanted to see it from above, from below, from wherever. Wherever you were standing, you had to be able to see the archive that you couldn't access, it, except you know, under high security conditions. Here's a, um, on an upper level, where you also have views out of the Crown Castle. You have a big open reading room with this kind of like skin coming up and then the archive here and then views down to what is really a kind of normal public library on the ground level. So this, this, these are where, this is where scholars study. Next up is the 3D print that we submitted. Okay, and so the idea of the suspended archive is also really important for our, for our energy concept. And that was to um, basically have very high-end controlled um, uh, um, uh, mechanical system in the archive in terms of humidity and temperature and everything. Um, something slightly less controlled in the offices and the basement. And then have a naturally ventilated um, space, public space in between, where we didn't care as much about the accumulation of heat up high in the mountain because it wasn't accessible. So we'd actually let heat accumulate up here. Um, but at the same time, open, have openings down below and here in the low areas to, to um, encourage the stack effect where you have natural ventilation um, in the summer. Um, and at the same time, also chill floors and all that kind of stuff. Just care. Um, yeah, so, so, that, so it was basically a reiteration of that concept of the second shell when it comes to the mechanical system. So here's the thing at night. This is the building next door. So we picked up on the, the, the height of that on the box, and then we did the mountain in the back, which is some sort of macro contextualism, where it's sort of... So this is a public library down below, and just about anybody can access that and go and read, whereas the rest of the machine is going up the So this is a more recent competition. It was for the Shenzhen Museum of Contemporary art, um, recently juried. This is actually Shenzhen's an amazing city. It was all built in about 30 years. So it's a brand new city, and it looks like that. That's not a rendering, it's actually a standard. Um, uh, amazing site. This is a civic center here, which you also see here. It's about 300 meters long, 1,000 feet. Uh, this is the biggest bookstore in all of China, called Book City. <laughs> and then there's an opera, a library, a youth center, and this is our building. And their concept to us, and in written in a brief, was the idea of a, of a Chinese garden, which is a sort of outright ludicrousy that you can have some kind of intimacy with these gigantic buildings with horrible zoning conditions. The setbacks are like 50 meters from all sides of these insanely large streets. It's like the worst of American zoning appears in China. And so, so we, we, we didn't take that seriously, but we started thinking about the idea of intimate space in a place that has no zoning control. So, so we tried to create an, a more intimate space between this youth center, which had a kind of L shape, and our building, which we made into an L shape, so that we could create this smaller zone, and then an even smaller zone here, where we created a plaza that we thought would be an attractor for the, for the museum of the right there. So this is the project. Um, it's, Basically, we took that L shape, which you can see here, and then we added a roof to it, which spans over the, the remaining quadrant and created shade. So this is um, south is this way, and this is north. So this is an accurate shading render um, to show that we could create this shaded space, this, this public space, that would be a draw for the museum. Again, the, the, the mechanical system, very critical. Um, Structural and mechanical stuff tends to be our point of departure on a lot of projects. Um, in this case, the mechanical system, particularly in the outdoor space, was very, and I like the idea of doing mechanical systems in the outdoor space. Um, uh, out here was very critical. We decided to propose um, uh, radiant cooling in the exterior because it's so low tech, um, you can do it. So we thought we'd have a, a kind of geothermal um, loop between you know, geothermic um, caissons, basically bring the water down, and then you cycle up cooler water from, from you know, down deep in the earth into these slabs, which, um, which chills the, the microenvironment here.